anybody listening girlfriend advice family advice worst thing ever like don't consider that oh because you have to understand that people they're th especially somebody who care about you mm -hmm. all they trying to do is like let's get you away from this pain as quickly as possible so you know they give you advice coming from that space and coming from their emotional state as well don't do that don't listen to family members don't listen to friends none of that so for me yeah my big thing was that around like be real you know like with people listening let them know like would you had have been satisfied if you was out there sewing your royal oaks like for me honestly um i'm gonna just say this real quick i god has me on a short lease leash i can't get away with nothing <laughs> i you know much love to everybody who can get away with stuff i can't get away with nothing like my my consequences come quick you know i agree so but that's me right yeah and that's what i thought about and and again i know me i think if i would have been out here i knew i would have been running the street i know i would have been like yeah 15 years i'm about to try it. <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm about to but there i just had a certain conviction yeah uh, that that I just knew I was like, man, somebody probably going to end up popping up pregnant, or I'm just yeah. running into some drama, or you know, because if I start, if I you know start doing this, I'm... so that's me, yeah. you know, to each his own. So yeah, I wanted to. Did you learn the hard way or no? Um, Did you start and then stop or no? I I I, I didn't. I I didn't. I I I wasn't when when I you know got when my wife and I remarried when I got with her. Um, that was, that was it. I, I was just like, nah, That's dope. I was, I, to the four people that might not know who you are, <laughs> can you just give a little introduction? Yes. My name is Sherelle Thomas. I am a certified sex, love, and intimacy coach. I work with powerful success driven individuals and couples. Um, and I help them by teaching them how to have a more fulfilling and satisfying love life and i teach them how to do this by helping them build a deeper connection with their partner as well as by teaching them mind-blowing sexual techniques that will leave both them and their partner satisfied yet yearning for more so all of that to say i help people within their love life i help them um achieve the love life that they've always desired but never thought that they could have mm. That's good. That's good. Yes, with specialties in the bedroom. Specialties. Yeah, we don't talk about that enough, especially in marriage, because it seems like yes. single, it's like all, all of my single folks having more sex than the marriage. Folks. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> like, how does that work? How did that happen? Yeah, right. We almost shame married folks for, for <laughs> having <it> now. <laughs> um, well, there was a question that was asked uh, by a young lady. She wanted to know. Is it wrong for uh, a wife to withhold sex if he's not meeting her emotional needs? I think, yes. Anytime you are playing tit for tat because your needs are not getting met, I feel like that's the cheap, sleazy, easy way out. Now, what I do feel, I don't feel that a woman should force herself to have sex with her partner if she's not satisfied. And that works both ways, like male or female. But I do think that there should be uh, effort put forth to make sure that that's something that like doesn't trickle over you know and doesn't cause or have a ne negative impact into other aspects like because your emotional needs are not being met doesn't mean that you need to pull back in another pleasure or another area that is um, actually working in the relationship because if you think about it every time something go wrong this is one area that's wrong and what the message that's being conveyed is like even though this is right over here i'm gonna pull back over here because this is wrong my advice is to address the issue and if it is having an impact on you know her sex life her libido because that's another thing like women are more emotional right so if it is having a negative impact on her libido then that's something that should be discussed but i don't think intentionally holding out is the route to go mm -hmm. I, I feel like that, that's so childish like address the issue i love 
Love that because a lot of times that's the default setting. The default setting is you haven't been a good boy, so I'm going to pull back. Yes. And, and I've learned, yeah. learned over the years is that, you know, if you fight fire with fire, the house is just going to burn down, right? Exactly. Like somebody exactly. Be mature. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be, somebody has to be the example of, of what healthy love looks like. Yes. Yes. And if it is having an impact, then that's what you say. Like, look, this is affecting my libido because, and then this is another thing, right? Think about that statement. My emotional needs are not being met. Men are not emotional. How does he know what that means? Like, how does he know what you need in order to get that need met? I always tell my clients, set your partner up to win. Tell them exactly what you need. So you can meet my emotional needs by doing X, Y, and Z. I need you to express interest in me. You know, like, show that you care. Tell me how much you love me. Like, whatever that is, give your partner those nuggets to work with. Don't just say, hey, my emotional needs are not being met. And it's just like telling somebody, you know, like, you got to, your, your back is itching, right? Mm -hmm. You got to direct them exactly to the right spot. They could be scratching all day long thinking that they getting the itch. And no, it don't work like that. Like, you have to direct them to the exact spot. And that's one thing that I really, really, really emphasize about success in relationships. Be specific. Tell your partner exactly what it is that you need. Don't just leave a, a general blanket statement. Hey, my emotional needs are not being met. I need you to meet them. Yeah, I love How that. How do I do that? Yes, I love that example you use because yeah, you could say, can you scratch my back, but where? Exactly. You know, exactly. You, Big you, old back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like up here and, and, and they scratch on your lower back. You like that. Exactly. Exactly. That ain't working. <laughs> mental dialogue. Thank you, mental dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you got to have Sherelle on your show, Mental Dialogue. We've been rocking for years, man. Uh, yeah. Great podcast. I mean, yeah, they, I think they would, he would love for you to be a guest because uh, of the great content that you give. You. <laughs> I'm saying. Uh, recovering from a divorce, if you don't mind sharing, how, how did you recover from, 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 from yours? Actually, I, I, I started doing healing work before I even divorced. Like I was so caught up in the marriage and I lost my identity, so on and so forth that, so for me i'm I'm saying this for me i'm not saying this for everybody but um i started actually recovering and healing while i was actually still married um so it made it a quote-unquote like easier process for me than the average person but i would think that the same steps would be taken which i started identifying what's important to me who am I now that I am no longer or will no longer be in this marriage? Like what roles do I still have and how should I go about doing it? So the first step is relearning yourself, like re relearning who you are, what's important to you, who you desire to be. Derek James, who is a, a, a professional boxer trainer, I don't know if that's the right term, but he's a he's a coach, whatever he does. He trained professional fighters to boxers. And he told me a quote, and I just hung on to those words. And I every chance that I get to share it with somebody else, I always do. And he said, identify who you want to be and be relentless in the pursuit of it. And I think that's a huge step, first step into recovering after a divorce, because a lot of times like it can be very traumatic. Most divorces are traumatic. It's very rare for it to be something easy, you know, that you just move on for. So, so that's the first step that I would say is identifying who you who you desire to be and be relentless in the pursuit of it. Mental dialogue acts where you separated when you started where you separated when you started your healing. Yes, Derek James Derek James is a trainer. Yeah. 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 I don't know his 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 
you know, I wanted to be clear in his title, <laughs> but yes, he is a trainer. Um, was I separated? Yeah, we were actually separated on and off for like the last couple of years of our marriage. So it will be on again, off again. Let's get a divorce. No, let's get, I think I, I started filing for divorce. Third time is the charm. That was, that was when it was done. So I, I filed twice before then, but, and the interesting part is when I finally stirred up the courage to file for the divorce, I, um, the judge wouldn't grant it. And he was just like, no, you know, like a, he doesn't pay enough in child support. And I, it, because I had moved from Ohio to Illinois, so we were getting it done in Illinois, but the child support case was from Ohio because that's when I had first started the divorce process. But anyway, he said he don't have jurisdiction over the child support. He's not paying enough. He wouldn't approve it. So mm -hmm. it, it was, yeah, I went the second time we had a hearing in court. I wasn't even going to go. It was to the point because they told me they wouldn't grant the divorce. And I'm like, I'm tired of going back and forth to court and they're not going to give it to me. I remember laying in bed and something was like, just go, just try, beg the beg him to give it to you. <laughs> like, And I jumped out of bed. Now, mind you, I was supposed to be in court, I think at like nine, eight, nine o'clock. And I live like 30 minutes from the courthouse. I wasn't ready at all. When I got to the courtroom, he was on his last case. That's how late I was. <laughs> they had already called my case. Wow. So I had asked them if they could, you know, call it up because they would ask me like, why are you here? Nobody else was in the courtroom except me. <laughs> and I told him why. And he was like, we called that a long time ago. Mm. So anyway, I begged and I pleaded with the judge and he did. He finally, he was like, I'll grant it, but you got to come back like next week or something like that. Mm. And he did. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> so yes, we were separated. Mm -hmm. Because I know even for me, when I went through my divorce, those last five, five years, I was struggling with trying to know if, if, I, if I had the courage to say it. To ask for a divorce? Yes. So how long, how long were you married? Uh, I was married 15 years. Okay. And then, so you knew like the last five years that you wanted a divorce, but you didn't say it until you held that in for five years. I I get it. I get it. I know somebody else who actually did that. They they actually, which I think a lot of us, especially in the black community, we get married because it's quote unquote the right thing to do. Like religion says, you know, we have a lot of people in our ear, you need to get married, you need to get married, this and that, because that was the case for me. And me and him had only been together six months, but we lasted 13 years. Yeah. But you know, I know of someone else that I was saying, like, he knew when he got married that he didn't want to get married. So he was married for, you know, a while, but he could never build up the courage to ask for a divorce. I hear that a lot, that people get married knowing that they, don't they like, want to. yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's an interesting dynamic. Because mm -hmm. I, cause I, I, got, I married at 24. Mm -hmm. um, thought I was ready, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Lasted 15 years. But like I say, those last five years, when you talk about the separation part, um, even when you were married, like you said, you were going through the healing process. Mm -hmm. Same here, but that last year, we act physically separated, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, so what do you do? What does that healing look like besides therapy? Are there any activities or anything? Do you have like girlfriends that you talk to that you can kind of bounce ideas off? Like what was going on for, for sure? Let me tell, tell you this. Anybody listening, girlfriend advice, family advice, worst thing ever. Like don't consider that whole, because you have to understand that people, they're th especially somebody who care about you, all they trying to do is like let's get you away from this pain as quickly as possible so you know they give you advice coming from that space and coming from their emotional state as well don't do that don't listen to family members don't listen to friends none of that so for me yeah my big thing was i hired a love coach and that's how i actually got into love coaching because i wanted the marriage to work 
And even though like we were separated and even though like that's where I learned to love myself. So that's why I say like it started before I actually got a divorce because I learned to love myself. And that's when my recovery started. And that's when I started identifying what's important to me. And actually, you know, when we when I decided that this is it, you know, like I'm filing for divorce as soon as I get back home because I was in Ohio with him. Um I, it was like, I, I, we were in a good place. Like we were in a good place. It wasn't like it was arguing, like it wasn't any, you know, hurt or anything like that, but it was from a grounded standpoint that I made the decision. And I think a lot of times, just like with you, you know, you said it took you five years. Oftentimes, a lot of people make that decision like, oh, I'm gonna go get a divorce, but it's from a heightened emotional state. You know, like you didn't sit down and think about it and then like play it out like, oh, and that's what I actually had to do. And it was in that that moment, January 2019, I was just like, you know what, that's it. That's a wrap. I'm done. And I did. And I politely told him when I get back to Chicago, like I'm going to file for divorce. I had a, you know, people, I, I make it, I make fun of the situation because I think it's funny. People be like, why did you get a divorce? And I said, because he wouldn't bring me home a brownie. But that was my aha moment. Like that was the moment that did it. And that was because he had told me he missed me and the kids. And we were living in Chicago because we were physically separated. Um, I had packed up the car. I went grocery shopping for his house, from my house. Um, when it got an oil change and then I drove six hours, six, seven hours to see him and because he wanted to spend the weekend with us, but you know, he had to work. So I was like, okay, fine. You miss us. We'll come there. We'll spend it with you. And I did all, all of this stuff. I mean, like I took lingerie, like I was just ready. Like I said, grocery shopping for both of our place. I didn't ask him like for anything, gas. You know, did my own oil change. Well, I didn't do it, but, you know, pay for it, all that other stuff. And I made it to his house at like 2 a.m. Five minutes before I pulled up at his house, it was like I got this download. He wouldn't do half of this for you. Wow. And I was like, damn. Wow. Like that hit. And when I saw him, it just rang true to my core. And then he usually had like a snack or something like for me. And he didn't have anything. So he was out at the grocery store the next day. And I was like, babe, like you didn't, you know, you don't have any sweets here for me. Can you bring me home a brownie? And he was like, go get it yourself. Now you in the grocery store. You mean you can't pick me up? And that's why it was just confirmation. So the message that I had received the day before, and I was like, that's it. As soon as I get back home, it's a wrap. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Terrell, it's interesting. Interesting that you say that. I was reading the book. I can't remember the title of it to save my life. But they say, how do you know when your marriage is over? When you, you don't get the brownie, right? <laughs> you know, when oh, you... Oh, they literally said that? Well, well, it wasn't the brownie, oh. brownie, but he was... The example, I'm just using yours, but uh -huh. as an example, he said that every morning, um, his, his wife used to make him coffee mm -hmm. every morning, religiously. And he said, once she stopped making coffee for me, yeah. the alarm went off and it was like, wait a minute, mm -hmm. something is not right because that routine was broken. All of a sudden, it's like there was a break. Yeah. You know, end of marriage. Um, so. And I, I love that you point that out because I think a lot of people don't understand that just like how you brought up the sex, you know, example, they don't understand that when they break off things that they do religiously, or that that's a that's a a form of intimacy, mm. you know, like making that coffee. That's a form of intimacy. That's a sense of security that they never have to worry about. Like I know that at the very least, I'm gonna get my cup of coffee. I'm gonna get my brownie. I'm gonna get my sweet. So it's like when you cut back off that, you're cutting a cord of connection. And I think it's very important, regardless of where you are in your relationship, if you start doing something, keep doing it. Keep that momentum going. Like that's a form of connection. And I'm not even gonna lie, like I'm an Aries fire sign. Like you piss me off, I blow something up in a heartbeat. So for me, yeah. that's a struggle. 
because when I see red, that's all I see is red. I can't remember. Or if I do make you coffee, I'm going to make it cold. Or, you know, so like it got to be different. That. Like, I know my weaknesses. <laughs> so, you know, I, I say that all the time. Like, I tell my partner all the time, like, don't, you know how I am. You know, like, don't expect this from me, but make sure you understand that that's not what it means. It means that I'm seeing red and I'm trying to process through this red right now, but don't take it personal. And I know it's easier said than done, but for those who have that willpower, for those who have that strength, please don't cut off those cords of connection. Continue to do what you normally would do because it is a form of intimacy and a form of security within your relationship. Mm -hmm. I agree. And how do you feel about remarriage? <laughs> um, I think I think that it's a beautiful thing for those who desire it. And I think that's the key, you know? For me, I learned that marriage, let me see, this is me. I feel like my opinion don't even matter, but from my experience, my your opinion matters it does matter <laughs> so like i was married for 13 years and my most recent relationship he was more of a husband to me than my original husband ever was so that piece of paper really doesn't mean anything to me you know i feel like it's more about the connection it's more about the commitment now mind you I'm not saying that I never want to be married again, but I do feel that it's more important to have that connection than the actual piece of paper. That's my opinion. And then religion come into play too. So that throw me for a loop too, because I love sex and all of this stuff. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the verdict is still out on that one, but I don't think it's a horrible thing. I feel like under the right circumstances, if you learn from your previous relationships, from your previous marriage, you can use that as ammo to help you succeed, you know, in remarriage. Mm, yeah. But, because but but. it is very important to marry for the right reasons. So what would be some, some, some right reasons to marry? What, what would be, what, what do you think is is because there's a lot of ideas out there like you don't marry for money or you don't get married for love like all these different ideas so yeah. your opinion my your opinion. opinion the right thing is does this person love you the way that you desire to be loved like does this person meet the needs in your non-negotiables um, your emotional needs, your spiritual needs, your mental needs, and your physical needs when it comes down to having a long-term committed relationship. Like, do you really feel like you want to be connected to this person for the rest of your life? I, I don't I don't look at it as, oh, you know, I get married and then if it go wrong, then I'm gonna, you know, bow bow down, back out. Like, no, like do you really truly love this person for who they are to their core and not for um like is it compatible do they work well with you do they meet meet those needs and the four most important components that i always talk about you have to be mentally compatible spiritually compatible emotionally compatible and physically compatible and when those are met if that is something that you desire, then wholeheartedly like go for the marriage if you both desire it. Mm, that's, that's how I feel. That's good. I was uh, listening to, uh, I'm gonna try to hold that question. My my um, pastor, my old pastor back in Cleveland, cause I'm from Cleveland. So oh, when you okay. said, yeah. He, he has this thing in his book where he talks about directional dating. So it's these Directional who? directional dating oh so, okay yes 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 yeah so you do either dating up or down because we only look at that perspective financially you know girl i can't date down no more girl he only making sixty thousand. My my other man was making 160 i i can't date mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. but he said there were other ways directional dating up and down because you could be dating down spiritually 
Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You yeah. could be down emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we only take this from a financial standpoint, at least on these social media streets where most mm-hmm. people say. But there's other ways because if a child gets sick and you don't know how to pray, you don't think I'm I'm dating down. This guy he at home sleep. Yeah. And we pray, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So there's or this. even emotionally. Like you think about that. You having a hard day. Oh gosh. I don't want to keep talking about me, but like that's one of the things that I greatly appreciate about my most recent relationship. Like he's seen me in all facets, going through chemo emotionally like at my worst he was able to remain grounded and stable and like that's what i need like i need someone who can actually hold that space for me so you talk about directional dating and that's the key component it's not just about financially not just about spiritually but emotionally can they hold that space for you to be all forms of you and still love you consistently in spite of yeah because because life life be life man right exactly <laughs> exactly is how how is your mindset coming out of a divorce and dating again like <laughs> what, what, what was that like because my mind was i was blown like getting back out here in these streets like <laughs> what did you find yourself like as a totally different person or you were just like i can handle this like yeah I it. like i was trying to find myself like i had been out of the dating game for so long and when i was like i was young i got married at 22 you know so it was such a young age and then you know then i didn't have any kids now i'm you know getting a divorce i got four kids and then one of the things that my ex-husband used to always tell me, ain't nobody going to want you. You got four kids. So, you know, when I when I went into the dating scene, I was looking at things through that lens. Like, shit, embarrassed to tell people about my most, you know, what matters the most to me, which is my four kids. Because people kept saying, ain't nobody going to want you. You got four kids. And he, he drilled that in like a sergeant. But it was like once I healed that i was able to experience something different so it was a bit challenging but i can i can honestly say and share this with you which i think is so funny like after him the it was it was challenging for me to be intimate you know with somebody else but the first time like i had sex with somebody else out there i was like this what i've been missing like did i ask for that divorce long time ago but yeah i was like that was the best sex of my life (laughs) oh my god i i hear you because i you know my situation was was a little different because i when i was going through my divorce and you know because my ex-wife was taking forever to sign the papers i was Mm -hmm. like oh my god like she just really don't want me to move on my life Mm -hmm. once people found found out and and you know i'm not trying to be all that or whatever but people was like Hey, what's going on? Like, you know, even at my job, they was like, "Oh, you home alone?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, and, it was like, like they saw all, oh, like yeah. this way, this way, go. <laughs> yes. They were coming for yeah. me. And, Same here. Same. And Sherelle, and my daughter was at the time she was fourteen, mm-hmm. and I was in fear of like. like not wanting to have that revolving door and my daughter see me because i knew if i turned the faucet on i knew if i if i got started i knew i wasn't gonna turn it off i was like but, you know you were one person for 15 years and now you get to get back out in these streets <laughs> and i said i i know me i'm i said you know what i'm not gonna start nothing i can't finish because lord knows if i start <laughs> i, I might have missed out on my wife now if i was running up streets because i would have been like well, you I, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm doing the most um, <laughs> do you seriously though do you think you would have been satisfied oh you gonna put me in the hot seat now <laughs> yeah if you would have went that route like be real you know like with people listening let them know like would you have been satisfied if you was out there sewing your royal oaks like for me honestly um I'm gonna just say this real quick. 
I, God has me on a short leash. Leash. I can't get away with nothing. <laughs> I, you know, much love to everybody who can get away with stuff. I can't get away with nothing. Like my my consequences come quick. You know. I agree. So, but that's me, right? Yeah. And that's what I thought about. And and again, I know me. I think if I would have been out here, I knew I would have been running the street. I know I would have been like, yeah, 15 years, I'm about to try it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm about to, but there was, I just had a certain conviction yeah. uh, that that I just knew. I was like, man, somebody probably going to pop up pregnant or I'm just yeah. running into some drama or, you know, cause if I start, if I, you know, start doing this, I'm, so that's me, you yeah. know, to each his own. So yeah, I wanted to. Did you learn the hard way or no? Um, did you start and then stop or no? I I I, I didn't. I I didn't. I, I I wasn't when when I you know got when my wife and I remarried when I got with her. Um, that was that was it. I I was just like nah. That's dope. I was I for me I was just like from a spiritual perspective I was like <sighs> I just. I don't want to, but that was me. Um, there was a question, uh, Mental Dialogue asked, so if the last person was more of a husband, if, if, so if the last person was Here more, why, why not marry? Because I just feel like time, you know, some people can give you a representative. And I, when I marry, I don't want to get a divorce, you know, like I want to know that this is this is it like this is final. So it's, I feel like that comes with time. You know, it's not something that's just like, oh, you show me more than him. Let's jump up and get married, you know. So now, as a woman, right. How How does that work for you? you know, I'm just asking because, you know, traditionally, you you know, you want the man to propose and stuff like, like that. So how, how do you operate in a relationship and do you wonder like, are we gonna get married or do you just totally just leave that alone? You're like, you know what? We just gonna, it's gonna happen when it happens. So let me, so specifically for me. Yes. I, I am big on being open-minded, right? So I know eventually, because of the benefits, you know, tax benefits and stuff like that, like, I do want marriage, mm -hmm. but I'm not looking at a man, marry me, marry me. I know I'm worth marrying. Like, I've been down that road. So it's like, I'm solid in who I am that I don't need to hound a man. I, I saw somebody posted this, which I feel like is so absurd. If he don't propose to you in six months, you need to break up with him. That means he not going to choose you. But what about you? You know, like, I feel like women sit around waiting on the bench. Pick me, choose me. That's not the energy that I come from. Okay. It's more so I know who I am. I know what it is that I have to offer. And I do trust and believe that in due time and perfect timing, that I'm going to get what it is that I want. So I don't have to sit and nitpick. I just want to make sure that he's in a position and that I'm in a position that if we do decide we want to get married, we can. That's the bigger thing for me. Like, and for a guy, if he, if he come into a relationship and he, and he like, nah, I don't want marriage. I know he's not the one for me, regardless of how much he seemed like husband material or anything like that i got this quote on my page that i got from the movie fences and she said um if you're not the marrying type that's fine wait no 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 that's fine step to the side because i'm the i'm the type worth marrying does that make sense yeah if you're not the marrying type that's fine but please step to the side because i'm the type worth marrying mm -hmm. and when i heard that quote i was just blown away like that's it like think about the kind of confidence like a woman has to have to say you know you that's fine if you don't want to get married but just step to the side so for me mm -hmm. that's the way that i look at it i know eventually marriage yes yeah. Do I need to be married tomorrow? No. Mm -hmm. So as long as 
it's an option. Like it works for me. And I just encourage women to be so confident in yourself that you're not sitting there. Oh, is he going to marry me? No. What, what do you want? Because I think that's one of the reasons people get married for the wrong reasons. They think, oh, he's willing to marry me. So I'm going to get married to him. Not because this is who I want to marry. It's more like he's the one who's going to give me this you know ideal life that society portray i have that i don't even know what i want mm. so so do you think do you think that when uh, a man proposes because a lot of a lot of women will jump on them like oh he's going to marry me but to have that confidence to be like i like you but uh, you're not the mirror's type i think that's that's next level discernment yeah. right there yeah. one thousand percent you know thousand percent yeah what 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 are, what are your thoughts on that like have you ever turned down a proposal <laughs> <laughs> don't put me on the spot several though like several and one of the, one of the guys, like he said, you know, like he was gonna propose in front of his his family. I'm like, don't do that. Like, don't mm. you dare do that. Like, you're gonna be mad at me. You're gonna be embarrassed. Like, yeah, I, I turned down several proposals though. Wow. So does that does that come from just confidence? Like, I'm surreal. Like, I, you know, what I'm saying, like, no. okay, no, Fool me because I'm trying to learn something. <laughs> it doesn't come from that. Um, the the first one that I turned down, he was obsessed with me. And like I knew that yeah, like I, I didn't like the way like that feel like he wanted to be controlling. So I knew that marriage would only give him more of that control. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was for me when it came down to that. And eventually I did get up the courage to leave the relationship because I didn't at first, but I knew I didn't want to be married. So that was one. Um, another, but after I got divorced and I was proposed to again, like I, it wasn't about I'm confident, I'm Sherelle. It was more so I know this is not a good fit. I know I want marriage and this is not, I don't want to go down that road that I've been down before. So it was more so from that, like from experience. I knew that he wasn't what I would be proud to call my husband. Mm. And I, I just can't make that kind of commitment. That's good. That's good. There's a question that someone asked, but I, I had this other question in my head. And because this, this, <laughs> I left my notes on my phone, but okay. I realized on my phone. And I just, uh, what is the biggest misconception that people believe about marriage? That once you get married, all your problems go away. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> I think that's a huge one. They think like that marriage and babies are going to solve everything. Like it'll bring you closer together. It'll make sure it'll give you this sense of security. And I think especially women, they're looking for an ideal type of marriage in their head and then when they get into it and they see that it doesn't change it and they're looking for this sense of security then they get like very disappointed once they realize that that ain't it you know you think oh he ain't gonna cheat on you no more because you got married but he was cheating on you before y'all got married like that ain't that, that ain't gonna make that problem go away you think because y'all got married like now your finances gonna be joined if he wasn't paying for nothing beforehand it ain't gonna change. Like you think, cause he give you your let, he give you his last name. Like now, all of a sudden, things are gonna be different. No, I think that's the biggest misconception when it comes down to marriage. That's why so many women they give it up freely before they get that ring. Once they get that ring, first thing they go on the back burner. Oh, my emotional needs are not being met, so I can't have sex with him no more. No, you playing tit for tat. Your emotional needs weren't being met before you got married, and you was throwing it at him because you was trying to get that ring. Now, I think that's what it is. It's, that's the biggest misconception. Ooh, I know some people are going to be mad. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't have talked about this. Yeah, we're going to turn this into a real... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but that's that's real. And I'm so glad you said that because uh, there's a question that someone asked. We're going to jump to that because a lot of people think the wedding ring is a superpower. They think mm -hmm. I'm going to turn into the Wonder Twins. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm talking about my age, uh, but they're going <laughs> to they like, oh, no wonder. What the heck? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you my age. But anyway, the, the, the wedding ring don't give you superpowers. And I love that you said that that's not, marriage is not going to resolve him cheating or her cheating. Like if you, yeah. if you, if you hot in the pants single and you, and you think that marriage is going to fix it. Nah, you, you used to sleeping with four or five people and now you're thinking one person is going to satisfy you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a question was asked, most guys I know change so much between 20 and 30, should people wait? I definitely feel that people should wait prior to getting married and make sure that they're marrying for the right reasons. I feel like, especially for me, at a very young age, I knew it was part of my life's purpose to be a mother and a wife. Mm -hmm. So I was always striving to I wanted this high school sweetheart be in this long-term relationship live happily ever after I thank God I didn't get that because I wouldn't be able to help as many people as I help now because it will be a limited experience but because of that I wholeheartedly feel that people should wait and understand what's their why of why they want to get married so that they could attract in a mate who will match that not based upon society even now like the age that I, I am like I keep asking myself why do I want certain things in my relationship is this what I genuinely desire or is this because of what society is saying that I should desire so that that's a huge thing for me right now, like I am unpacking and dissecting all of that. Do I want this partner because he fit in the image that society and my family say I should be with or because I genuinely desire to be with this person? Mm -hmm. And I wholeheartedly feel like people should wait. You get married in your 20s. You don't know that. You haven't had, and I'm not saying go out there and be a hobby, a slut. You, let, let me back up. I shouldn't even use those words. I'm not saying go out there, sleep around, give your body to, away to any and everybody, or try this relationship, try that. But start understanding who you are to your core. What's important to you? What make you tick? What do you like? You want me out the house? Like I got married at 22. I ain't even live on my own. I moved right into, I think I lived, probably lived on my own for like, mm, not even a year. Mm. And mm. I went from living with my parents by myself for a year, marriage. That was not enough time for me to understand who I want to be 20 years down, down the line and what's important to me, what make me tick, what do I love, what's going to work for me, mm. what type of parent. I want to have, you know, with my kids, what type of co-parent, you know, that I want to raise my kids with me. So I wholeheartedly encourage people to get to know themselves and wait if they have to. If you don't know why you're getting married or if you're getting married because of religion, like that was a huge thing for me. I got pregnant the first time we had sex and... Mm -hmm. My grandma, oh, you need to get married because she was a pastor. You need to get married. I'm at his wedding. You know, I'm going to pay for it and this and that. And I was just like, I knew then. I didn't want to do it. Mm. But I did it. I knew I didn't have enough information. I only know the man six months. Mm. But I did it anyway. Yeah. 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 That can, yeah. That can be challenging. Because I married at 24. Mm -hmm. I am today is totally different than when I'm married at 20. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, no, I totally get it. Because there was, okay, I kind of want to pivot just a little bit because Okay. We, okay? Uh -huh. All right. Now, there, there's a, a video that I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, I don't know if you know who the lady is. Her name is Tara Bodie. Uh, she's a therapist. But she talked about, this video is going crazy on my reel, and she talked about you should apologize to your kids for 
picking wrong. <laughs> because, because now he's nowhere to be found. Now your child have to suffer because you chose wrong. What are your thoughts on that? First of all, I don't even think the kids warrant an apology. What should be done first is you apologizing to yourself, but not from a judgmental standpoint. Mm -hmm. Giving yourself grace, asking for your own forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Man, I didn't know. Had I known, I would have cho chose differently. And I think the part with the kids but is just being honest. But you married though. But you but you did marry. I think her context was saying like, just you were married, but just kind of like baby I went daddy. married when I first got, and and he's a he's like borderline Debbie. Like oh okay okay so, okay. yeah it ain't it ain't all peaches and cream over here like okay. <laughs> but what i can say is because i do like that's why i smile like that when you said that is because i feel like matter of fact i wrote a letter of forgiveness to myself the other day and that was one of the things that i said i forgive myself for i forgive myself for choosing him like as their dad like i love who they've become and their dna and genetics and all of this stuff but for the type of father that he is, I would have chose better for my kids. I love my kids. But one thing I also did teach them is to love their dad in spite of, you know? Like, I'm not, they know I don't rock with their dad like that. They know I don't like him like that. But I taught them how to love him and how to see him through a certain lens. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what matters, like, the most. I don't... And even with, with that being said, like, say, if he was absent, you know, I, I would definitely forgive myself, apologize to myself, but also make peace with knowing why I made the decision that I made, like accepting that part of me that made that decision and my responsibility with my kids, which I used to always tell them, like, they only met one other man that I dated outside of my most recent relationship and with him it was kind of like by default it wasn't like oh I want you to come meet my kids I want you to be around my kids it was more so like damn this is our only free weekend I got the kids you know like we got to make this work kind of deal because we were both traveling and missing each other so it was kind of like he met him by default but the, the most recent relationship was more of a conscious effort what characteristics do I see in you that I want my kids to have, you know, or that I want them to experience? But I share that to say with my kids, even when they weren't seeing their dad on a regular, I would always let them know, you know, like, don't feel bad about yourself. Like, if there's something that you're struggling with, that you feel uneasy with, you feel sad about, talk to me about it. You know, I don't want you to carry this or make it seem like it's something pertaining to you because it's not. This is who he is because of the type of father that he had. Don't let that trickle over into your identity. So it wasn't so much of me, a, quote unquote, like apologizing to them. But I did have that conversation, yeah. you know, with them about the importance of how they view themselves and the importance of having the right relationship with a male figure because that's another thing that i used to also do is like i would ask my brother and my dad you know can you come around because i wanted them to have that masculine energy and i wasn't bringing just any man around my kids so that was a huge thing a huge component for me and i always let them know like when the time is right y'all gonna have a special dad that regardless of what your dad is not doing, this man is going to be able to step up and do it, you know, for you guys. Because I was choosing and dating with intent. Mm -hmm. If I couldn't bring you around my kids, no, we weren't going to be in no committed relationship. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We can go on dates here and there. But how, how did you learn that, though? Like, did you have, like, how did you, because, and, and I'm not, no, no shade or anything like that, but a lot of people just don't know. I that watched men abuse stepchildren mm. and because of that 
it was a big fear that I had. Um, I've also watched people, male in my, males in my family, molest younger kids. So because of that, I, I, I look, the west side live deep inside me, so I have to be mindful. But I would hurt somebody over my kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. And because of that, and because I know who I am and I know my limits, like I had to make sure that this is solid, you know, if I'm going to trust and have somebody like around my mm-hmm. kids. So mm-hmm. from basically from traumatic experiences is what caused me to do that. But also understanding that we can't operate from a state of fear, that we call in what we want, not what we don't want. So that's how I was able to really focus on this special dad, you know, and this man coming into your life and sowing into you to edify you, to elevate you, to make you a better person. And that's more so what it is for me. Mm-hmm. You know, that's good because uh, sometimes, you know, and we all make mistakes and stuff like that. Like, I get it. But there's a lot of people who don't understand what you're talking about or or, or never probably witnessed that. They just kind of bright eyed and bushy tail and they, you know, first person they fall in love with or they were fine or sexy, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Never know what comes with that. Yeah. And I think for women we fantasize about that because that's what we've taught to fantasize about at such a young age think about all of the you know animated movies beauty and the beast cinderella you know all of those movies where it's about the lady being chosen you know her waiting this man coming by in knight in shining armor to save her so that's what a lot of females look for and we carry this story with us for so long that when somebody come along, we put them in that role. Not even if they want to be in that role. I remember when I used to date, <laughs> me and my friends, we had this ongoing joke. Because when we used to date, like when we were out there, it would be like, oh, this is my husband, you know? And like we would laugh and joke about it. But there was some truth behind that, you know? Like we heard five different things that he liked that we like and all of a sudden like this is how he is worthy enough of being like our husband or something like that so <laughs> it's funny now but it's some truth a lot of females actually do that yeah especially in this social media age i can imagine you know you kind of scrolling and you know he fine he fine you know that whole thing yeah, you know? yeah. oh my god um, um let me see uh, cause I'm going to be respectful of your time. Uh, we have this one question. Would you rather have a partner who has already been married or someone who has never experienced marriage? That's, that's one of my uh, bonus questions, but go ahead. I definitely want somebody who experienced marriage or either a long-term relationship before, because mm-hmm. I feel like they understand the value of it or either somebody who was exposed to it. Like if who saw their parents married and, you know, it's some, you got to have some type of experience. You can't be completely oblivious, raised in a single household, never been married, never had a long time relationship. Like, yeah. But people will be saying that though, it's real. And I, and I totally agree with you. I believe, and let me just use this as an example. When we were kids, we were playing basketball outside. We would say, Jordan, shoot the ball. You know? And the only reason why we said Jordan is because we saw Mike play. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. I can't call somebody name I've never seen right. play. You know, so people, people oh, I don't, I don't have to see a healthy relationship in order to, 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 uh, to be in one. You say that <laughs> until you get in one. Oh, shit. Like, what? happened i didn't nobody tell me that this is what it comes yeah yeah right i think that's important i do think you need to see those things you know Um, yeah like what do you pull from those nights where you know times are challenging and times are hard like where do you pull from if you've never seen it if you never witnessed it you never desired it i ain't gonna say desire but yeah right i feel like boxing boxing i'm a huge boxing fan but this is a perfect example how it applies in that situation Mm -hmm. you can look 
look at a fight all day long. You can practice hitting the pads, hitting the bag all day long. But when they put you in that ring with somebody else and you get punched in your face, nah, <laughs> totally different experience. Right. Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson is, is known for saying uh, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face, right? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Courage will give you that left hook to the gut and, and, and see if you can get up. Exactly. You're on your knees for a couple of seconds and you can't breathe. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's why I think experience come in that because if you see somebody so furious and so angry that they ready to blow up the whole house and you see how they're able to come down from that, that gives you tools that you can work with within your relationship of like, oh, I saw this, I witnessed this, you know, I can apply this there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Because my old mentor, he used to tell me, he used to say, Sean, when, when she let out her lion, you let out your lamb. You know, and I was just old school stuff, right? And I didn't get it for a minute, but basically what he was saying is, you got to be that example. You got to, so that way when it's your turn that you need some grace, they like, oh, yeah. I see you to me. He didn't, he didn't, you know, we didn't fight fire with fire. He, he took it. Yes. You know? You know but if he bring out that lion, I'm bringing out a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still been, I'm still working on that. It, it, it's all good, you know. It, and again, it's that directional dating, mm -hmm. right? It, it, emotionally, you know, are you dating up or down emotionally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, a question they said, um, but they had to have learned it. I know too many that get divorced and don't evaluate what they learn correct yeah, that's true well the divorce mm -hmm. are higher the second time i believe it's 67 percent, and then the third time i believe it's 73 yes. percent. You know? yeah yeah because it's easier once you once you start doing something and this is your way out you found that this exit worked for you it's so much easier to do it again as opposed to sitting in it and i think that's a great comment whoever said that about you know if you don't learn like just because you was married 10 years you still don't mean you were good fit for me that's just one component that make it easier for us to connect on but that's not mm -hmm. the only criteria that it is it just make it easier more relatable mm -hmm. that's real that's real Ah, oh, Sherelle, this has been good. I'm glad that we got to make this happen again because you're one of my favorites. I love your perspective on things and the way you talk about, you know, the honesty and stuff. So let everyone know uh, how they can get in touch with you, what you got going on. Talk you to can them. find me on Instagram, Shirelli Thomas, is C-H-A-R-E-L-L-E-E-T-H-O-M-A-S. Um, I'm also on YouTube as Sherelle Thomas, but the link is in my bio. Everything that I have going on is in my bio. I have the Art of Gripping coming up tomorrow night for the ladies. I think it's two tickets left. Um, and then I will be retiring this workshop. But it's all about teaching females how to master gripping, how it can benefit them, even if they're single and, you know, solo. It can enhance your sexual experience and prepare you for future sexual experiences, but especially if you're in a long term relationship. Like gripping, I feel is is a is I feel like it's God's gift. Like <laughs> it set us up to win. Like you ain't gotta be up there riding and then they if you ask guys like what make good sex, they ain't saying, you know, her giving me hair for 40 minutes or her riding me, you know, for 30 minutes. You get that grip. You can take him out the game in three minutes if you wanted to. <laughs> but so ladies learn how to come to the art of grip and learn how to master the grip. I will be retiring this workshop um, after tomorrow, pretty sure. We've been at it for a while. I'm just ready to teach on some new things. So that's what I have coming. Yeah, you got to talk to more married folks. Married folks don't have those conversations. Yeah, they don't. They get married. They, the whole conversation now. They don't, they don't. And my heart go out to them. Like, you know, a lot of guys be like, how can I introduce this to my wife? Like, what? Y'all don't talk about sex? Like, 
to me, that should be easy peasy. And that's what I mean about getting in relationships with somebody you're not compatible with. If it's something that you're interested in, just like you talk about a piece of gum, you should be able to talk about sex. Like, look, babe, did you see this new brownie they came out with? You want to try it? Same thing. Look, babe, you see this gripping that she's talking about? You want to try it? <laughs> <laughs> That's <Okay>. simple. <laughs> real, for real. So y'all, hey, make sure y'all sign up. It's, it's been a bunch of folks in here tonight. So uh, watch the, uh, the playback as well. Yes. Uh, Thank you so much for your support throughout the years. Um, we've been connected like three years now. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and media years, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. So thank you for your time. Um, Boy, appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Uh, for the continued support, right? She yeah. even rocking rock the Scared to Remarry shirt. That's what's up. Brave Hearts, go to scaredtoremarry.com. Pick up your Scared to Remarry shirt. Yeah. And it's good quality too, y'all. I done watched this shirt like 50 times and it still look brand new. Look at that. I'm so serious. I love a good t-shirt. This one is good quality. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, that's real. Well, y'all make sure y'all go visit her website. Get 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 all the all everything that she got going on. All of her stuff is great content. I've been following Thank you. her here. So make sure you connect with her because I don't need to connect with some of the greatest people that I've ever encountered. So uh, thanks again, Sherelle, for your time. And thank you all. So everybody that's watching this, go share the replay. Please go yes. share the replay. Somebody need to hear this. Believe yes. me, you know somebody in your group chat, uh, send it to them. <laughs> so uh, visit the website at scarytoremarry.com. You can also listen to the podcast. <clears throat> you can find it on uh, Apple Podcasts as well. So make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you all for joining. For joining. Uh, this is Sean Heinen with a special guest, Sherelle Thomas. Yes, thank you for having me. No problem, sure. Take care. Right, you too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. -bye. Bye.